Well, over the past few weeks, we've been reporting extensively on the heat waves that have hit large areas of Europe, the United States, and parts of Asia. Well, now, leading scientists have told the BBC they're concerned by the recent run of new climate records being set, saying the speed and timing of them is unprecedented. Some fear we're already witnessing worst-case scenarios. Georgina Renard explains. Sweltering temperatures in Spain and dangerous wildfires in Greece. Millions have struggled through powerful heat waves around the world in recent days. Now, scientists are poring over a run of climate records that have not only been broken, but smashed. And alarm bells are ringing. It's true to say that the models, that the climate models that we have work, do a very good job of predicting the climate system, but in a kind of larger scale. So, um, you know, the fact that we're seeing the world warming because of greenhouse gases is not unexpected. But seeing some of these records being broken, you know, these marine heat waves in the North Atlantic, the, the severe decrease in Antarctic sea ice was not expected. And it's something that we're going to have to work to try and understand. And this is why they're worried. For decades, the global average temperature has been getting higher and higher. Then in July this year, it broke through 17 degrees for the first time. The record for the hottest day on Earth fell not just once, but three times in a week. And it's not just the land that's hot. The oceans, which take up most of the world's heat, are seeing unprecedented temperatures. The North Atlantic and seas off the UK coast are up to five degrees hotter than average. And there's another worrying abnormality. Sea ice in the Antarctic is extremely low for the time of year, 10% lower than usual. We know that the planet is warming because of greenhouse gases pumped into the atmosphere by humans burning oil, coal and gas. The world will also be hotter because of El Nino, a powerful, naturally occurring weather pattern that started in June. But scientists say these records constantly being broken are not yet a sign that the climate is in collapse. They say there is time to use the solutions we have to keep the planet as livable as possible. Georgina Rannard, BBC News. Well, in Greece, the heat wave there is set to be the longest in Greece's history. That's according to the country's Weather Institute. It's currently facing its hottest July weekend in 50 years, with temperatures in some areas climbing to 45 Celsius. That's 113 Fahrenheit. Well, let's go to Greece now and speak to our reporter, Azadeh Moshiri. She's in Lagonisi, which is southeast of Athens. Azadeh. Celia, it's extremely hot here in Greece. You can tell by the heat around me. If you were here, you'd feel it was scorching. And of course, you know, it's making it even difficult to see you right now. That's how bright the sun is. But while that may be great for the beachgoers behind me, for Greece, a country that has been battling wildfires throughout the week, it's particularly difficult and concerning. Officials are still warning of a high risk of wildfires uh, as they keep battling blazes. Right now, that wildfire is focused on the island of Rhodes, and they're warning that the next few days could see the mainland have further flare-ups as well. Now, away from the wildfires themselves, uh, for people in the city of Athens, for example, they could be experiencing temperatures uh, in, the high, in the mid to high 40s uh, for six to seven days more. Uh, and for people who work in the Acropolis, that is unbearable. That's why uh, archaeological sites like the Acropolis are going to be shut between noon to 5.30 p.m. Uh, to protect the workers as well as tourists. As a day, and, and so regionally, what, where, where are we looking? I know that, that, that Greece has really been struggling, but this has really been, you know, millions of people around the world have been struggling with the heat in the past few weeks. That's right. It's been affecting the northern hemisphere. The United States has really struggled. Temperatures have been extremely high uh, in the south in particular, in Arizona and Phoenix. They've been, they've been dealing with temperatures of around 43 degrees Celsius for three weeks. And they're warning, uh, meteorologists are warning, that temperatures could reach 46 degrees Celsius in Phoenix, Arizona. That led to a particularly dangerous scene uh, where tanks exploded in a propane business that was near the airport. A fire captain there said a fire captain there said that uh, those tanks essentially became missiles and of course southern europe as a whole has been affected by the temperatures as well okay as a thank you for speaking to us
Staying with the climate, the number of people known to have died in recent flooding in South Korea has risen to 47. Last weekend, 13 people died in an underpass after they became trapped in vehicles as floodwaters poured into the tunnel. The heavy rain has also triggered landslides in some areas, with thousands of people displaced and many homes destroyed. Preparations are underway for more monsoon rains expected this weekend. Well, earlier, we spoke to Yuna Koo. She's a reporter with the BBC Korean service in Seoul. And she told us more about the preparations that are being made. Actually, the rescue team is still in search of missing people who possibly have been swept away by floods or landslides from last week's torrential rain. The emergency service confirmed 47 people dead and three people still missing, and around 2,000 evacuees are yet to return home. And now we are seeing another um, another big monsoon period and starting this week, weekend, and local governments and relevant ministries have been inspecting sites that are prone to floods, such as riverside walkways, slopes, and underpass. Also, they are making sure whether drainage facilities are operating properly. We can say that uh, it is uh, unpre kind of unprecedented, but we cannot be sure because monsoon period is not officially ended. But um, it is not raining in Seoul right now, but uh, people in the southwestern regions are already starting to see some droplets since uh, Saturday morning. And according to the state weather agency, another heavy rain is expected over the weekend all across the country, which could be up to 150 millimeters, depending on the location. And uh, according to their the agency report, this shows that this year's monsoon period started from June 5th, 25th, and the average precipitation recorded 591.1 millimeter as of last Thursday. This is the highest number ever recorded within the same time period, which is more than twice the average.